Hello friends and welcome to Techie Jack. In this video we are going to discuss about the difference between Azure AD and Active Directory on-premises. So let's get started. If you see the both screen, at the left side you will see the on-premises Active Directory and at the right side you will see the Azure Active Directory. You can see that it has a user contact computer group and many other things as well but at the right side if you see you have a users group external identities roles administrative units and many other things but you do not have an organization unit in a azure active directory and neither you can apply a group policy on azure active directory active directory domain services is a traditional deployment of windows server based active directory and you can uh, install it on your physical machine or in a virtual server. Although ADDS is a commonly considered to be a primarily directory service and it is the only one component of Windows Active Directory suite of technologies which also include Active Directory certificate services that is called ADCS and an Active Directory lightweight directory services that is called ADLDS and you also have Active Directory Federation services that is called ADFS and Active Directory Write Management service that is ADRMS. Although you can deploy and manage ADDS in your Azure virtual machines, it is recommended you use Azure AD instead of using your ADDS unless you are targeting infrastructure as a service workload which depends on ADDS especially. Although Azure Active Directory and on-premises Active Directory has many similarities, Azure Active Directory came with the concept of on-premises Active Directory itself but there are so many differences in both of these directory system and it is important to realize that using Azure Active Directory is different from deploying an Active Directory domain controller on an Azure virtual machine and adding it to your on-premises domain. That means if you want on-premises Active Directory you can deploy that on Azure but you have to take the resources like you have to take the virtual machine from the Azure resource and then you can install Active Directory domain services on that but that is a different thing and Azure AD is different thing. So let's move further and see the authentication method. ADDS authentication with a third party application. For an example you have a third party application uh, developed on PHP or any other platform and you want your Active Directory user to authenticate with the same username and password. You want them to use the same credential what they are using for their Active Directory accounts. So uh, here the uh, protocol we will use like LDAP is a protocol which help you to integrate your third party application with the Active Directory and the authentication method is Kerberos NTLM. You can use the same credential after successful integration of your third party application with your Active Directory. You can use the same credential on your third party application but it will not be a SSO that means single sign on. The single sign on means when you already enter your username and passwords you don't have to type them again and again but in this scenario you have successfully integrated your third party application with your active directory but still you may enter the username and password on your third party application and let's see how it works with the azure here we have a azure active directory authentication system and for an example you have a third party application and your active directory system is a azure active directory so first of all the rest api will be the thing which will be integrating your uh, third party application with your azure active directory and yes you will get the sso like single sign on that means when you already signed in you don't have to put your credentials again and again and the authentication will be saml ws federation open id and oauth for authorization Azure AD versus ADDS. At the very first you can see the identity solution. Azure AD is a primarily an identity solution and designed for HTTP and HTTPS communication. The second is REST API. Queried using the REST API over HTTP and HTTPS instead of LDAP. The LDAP is used in a ADDS but in Azure AD REST API are used and the protocol is used like HTTP and HTTPS. REST API query because Azure AD is HTTP and HTTPS based protocol so it does not use the Kerberos 
authentication. Instead, it uses HTTP and HTTPS protocols such as SAML, WS Federation and OpenID Connect for authentication and OAuth for authorization. The fourth one is Federation Services. Azure AD includes Federation Services and many third-party services such as Facebook and many other as well. Fifth one is a flat structure. Azure AD users and group are created in a flat structure and there are no organizational unit or group policy object in Azure AD. And Azure AD is a managed service you only manage the users, groups and policies. So deploying ADDS with virtual machine using Azure means that you have to manage the deployment, configuration, virtual machine, upgrading, updating and the backend task. All the tasks you have to perform if you are deploying your ADDS on Azure. So let's see what are the Azure Active Directory additions we have. Azure Active Directory comes in four additions. Free, Microsoft 365 apps, premium plan and premium 2 plan. The free edition is included with an Azure subscription. The premium editions are available through a Microsoft Enterprise Agreement, the Open Volume License Program and the Cloud Solution Providers Program. Azure and Microsoft 365 subscribers can also buy Azure Active Directory Premium P1 and P2 online. If we talk about Azure Active Directory free plan, it basically provide user and group management, on-premises directory synchronization, basic reports and single sign-on across Azure and Microsoft 365 and many other popular software as a service apps you can say. If you sign up for a Microsoft 365 apps, you still have a Azure AD account and this addition provides identity and access management for Microsoft 365 apps including branding, multi-factor authentication, group access management and self-service password reset for cloud users. And if you talk about the Azure Active Directory Premium P1 plan, in addition to the free features, P1 also lets your hybrid user access both on-premises and cloud resources. It also supports advanced administration such as dynamic group, self-service group management, Microsoft Identity Manager, and cloud write back capabilities which allow self-service password reset for your on-premises users. And if you talk about a premium 2 plan, in addition to free and P1 feature, P2 also offers Azure Active Directory identity protection to help risk-based conditional access to your apps and critical company data and privileged identity management to help discover, restrict and monitor administrator and their access to resources and to provide just in time access when it is needed. So friends, let me show you what is the single sign on means on a real scenario. I am logged in. This is a Azure account and this is a Office 365 account. And I am logged in with my credentials. And if you see here at the left side, you have a Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneDrive, OneNote, SharePoint, Teams and Yammer. That means if I am logged in with this account, I don't have to put credential for each and every app. So if I click on this Outlook, I will be logged into my Outlook. And if I click on this Teams, I will be able to log into my Teams. So uh, the single sign on means I am already signed in with one uh, credential and all the app will take my the same credentials and I don't have to sign in again and again. So friends, if you found the video informative, do subscribe the channel and also check out some other video links on the screen.